and former acting managing director of the Niger Delta Development Commission, Ibim Semenitari, has condemned what she calls an alleged attempt by some political actors to plunge River State into another round of violence. Uh, Ms. Semenitari called for an immediate stop to the crisis as she noted that River State had had too many political crises which hasn't in any way favoured the state. The former acting MD of the NDDC also condemned calls for the impeachment of the governor, noting that it was outrageous that only six months into the administration anyone would consider such. She also condemned the crisis in the River State House of Assembly, which is key to the running of the state. She joins me on the news at one, former acting MD of the NDDC, Ibn Semanitari. Thank you for joining us this hour. You were once former uh, Commissioner for Information in Rivers. Help us understand what you think is happening here. Um, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I don't know if I even understand it as part of the problem because Rivers residents uh, uh, woke up yesterday to quite the disturbing news of an explosion at the State House of Assembly. Um, before we knew what was going on, um, you know, there were claims and allegations um, from news the previous night that there would be an impeachment of the governor and all kinds of things. So it was quite uh, ludicrous uh, to find that this was what was going on. And before anyone knew what was going on, slam bang one, um, allegations of impeachments and counter allegations were flying all over the place. Uh, I think the governor, from his comments, then went to go to see what was going on at the House of Assembly, uh, only to be shot at by water, by the police, water cannons, tear gas, um, all of that, really ridiculous. But, and for, but for me, what is troubling is that nobody gains from a crisis, nobody. It's, it's not beneficial to anyone. So, and River State has embroiled in, been embroiled in political crisis over and over again. And, you know, it just brought back very sad memories of, of this kind of thing again from 2013, um, 2015. You don't want that kind of crisis. And so I think we really are at that point when we must tell ourselves that as a state, we cannot afford any further crisis. So it's no. one thing to condemn what happened at Rivers. Uh, it's mm -hmm. another thing entirely to have uh, the issues resolved amicably. You've, uh, you know, condemned the attempt to impeach mm -hmm. Mr. Governor, but they say there's no smoke without fire. I mean, mm -hmm. there is a political challenge here, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are names flying all around. What's your recommendation to amending well, that, uh, a relationship that was once cordial? I think that one good thing that has already happened is that political leaders in the state are suing for peace and they are having a conversation with all of the uh, feuding parties. I think that's a good critical first step. We need to get everybody to the table and everybody needs to have a conversation around what is going on and what needs to stop and what needs to continue because we can't consistently have this happening. So I'm glad that that's happening. Um, leaders in our state are coming together, former, former office holders, former governors, and various leaders are coming together and saying, no, 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 we're going to have to resolve this. So we don't want it's to hard to keep this. track with politicians. Um, you, you know, I can't tell whether you're with the PDP or not, but I understand that the PDP has called for an emergency meeting on this matter. How, mm -hmm. Which, who, who speak to both parties? And precisely I'm talking about the former governor and the incumbent governor, because the last I checked, um, the former governor isn't quite pleased with how things are run within the PDP, and I also don't think it's APC's business idea. Okay, so first is, uh, it was very clear where I belong to. Um, I resigned from the APC a long time ago, and everyone is aware. I issued a statement when I resigned. Uh, so I resigned from the APC. I am a member of the PDP, no doubt about that. Who is going to speak? I'm glad that the PDP has called for a meeting. That's a good first step. The former governor has consistently said that he is a member of the PDP and I don't think it is up to us to deny when him. When was the PDP. last time he attended such meeting? Do you expect him to attend this one? I think that he would attend. It's a meeting being called by the elders in the state and I'm talking of the one in the state uh, and I do not think he has a problem with the leadership with the elders in the state. I also would like to think that he, 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 he wouldn't want a crisis that is prolonged. I'm hoping so. 
uh, I'm hopeful that he wouldn't want that because he wouldn't benefit from it, nor will anyone for that matter. So you are quite optimistic that this can be resolved with a meeting called by the PDP? I think the operative word is hopeful. <laughs> I, I like that um, you're also expressing some cautious optimism as well. But what happens now, you know, it's roughly between five and six months for the new governor. How do you exactly. see this potentially impact on the quality of governance in River State as we know it? Well, you know, one good thing is that the governor has continued to focus on his day job, and I'm glad to see that that is happening. Um, and I'm hoping that he will stay focused on his day job. I listened to the things he said. I listened to him on TV uh, and on social media, and it is very clear that, yes, he's upset, but he's also committed to doing his job as governor of River State. At every point in time, there can only be one chief executive, and so for now, the chief executive of, of River State is Sasim Nalai Fubara. I expect him to know this and to do his job, the job for which reverse people have elected him. Um, I'm glad that, like I said, the elders in our state are coming together to say, listen, it's one state where one people, there isn't any reason for us. I mean, we're brothers, so there's, there's nothing that brothers cannot resolve. I'm quite familiar with the narrative of a former governor, you know, um, allegedly being overbearing and poke nosing into the affairs of its, uh, of its successor. But there's also another angle to this story. You were once a commissioner who worked with the governor. If a governor mm -hmm. sponsored your election, you probably should know the character of that governor, someone you've worked with for years. And you should also know that part of your job as being governor is also your ability to manage your predecessor. How relevant is that to this conversation? Well, I believe, again, you know, I don't know the ifs and what ifs of this matter. I cannot um, say, oh, A was overbearing and B was not. That would be totally, um, you know, because I wasn't in that room. And so it would be wrong for me to speculate. What I can say, though, is that, yes, if, uh, again, um, an election is usually sponsored by more than one person, uh, you would find that it's a party matter. Um, and, yes, uh, the, the current governor has consistently spoken about the role that the immediate past governor played in his emergence. Um, and he has said that repeatedly. Every chance he gets, he continues to say, look, this guy has done a great thing and he's helped me and all of that. So I think that there is no doubt that he realizes that the, the, the immediate past governor was a benefactor. And I don't think he would in any way discountenance that. Uh, I've also listened to the immediate past governor say repeatedly interview after interview yes. that he doesn't believe lording it over his successor. Indeed. He doesn't believe that whoever succeeds him needs to report to him. Again, I'm going based on what both of them have said uh, publicly. So all of this is in the public domain. Therefore, I believe that whatever the issues are, they should be able to resolve them because both men have clearly said, one has said, the fact that I was instrumental and I helped and under God, you were able to become governor does not mean you are my slave. You don't need to report to me. Mm. Um, the other one has said, this guy was so... I think that whatever the issues are, things they can both I, resolve. I get you quite well. It's easy to tag this a political disagreement, but crime has also been committed. Uh, we've seen assassinates, you know, burn down a part of the State House of Assembly. Given how strong politically the figures are in this fight. Uh, are you optimistic that um, the police will be able to do its job to bring those who have committed such heinous act, you know, to book and to also set this as a precedent to ensure it doesn't happen again? I hope that the police can do that. And I, I have great confidence in the current Inspector General of Police. So I believe that he's not going to just uh, sit back and watch. Uh, he has, again, this is me going by the kinds of sound bites I have heard from the IG. Uh, so I am sure that uh, these things would be addressed. Again, the governor of River State, uh, Sassim Nalai Fabara, in what I heard him say yesterday, did say that they would ensure that investigations into this take place and that the culprits are brought to book. Certainly, none of us, no human being should um, accept arson. It is not acceptable. This is government property. This is 
taxpayers' funds. Right. Um, people really need to be respectful of, of taxpayers' funds. Dame Ibem Seminataris from Acton MD of the NDDC. Thank you for talking to us on the news of this. Thank hour. you very much for having me. Thank you. I appreciate it.